Evelyn to Phil, May 26, 1941, 6 feet, 6 15 p.m. Dearest Phil, after all the talking we did, we failed to discuss the most important question of whether we should have a plug installed in our house and where it should be located. If you want one, the best place, I think, for it is the parlor. But where in the parlor would you like to have it? I promised Mr. DeCoven that I would call him sometime this week and let him know. Since you don't think you'll be able to come in this weekend, I think the best thing for me to do is to drop the entire matter. Mom has changed her mind and is not going to New York. She also keeps asking me if we, page two, intend moving out to the new house if there is a war. She seems more worried than ever and dislikes the idea of moving out to the new house. She's afraid that we won't be able to meet the expenses which accompany the moving and settling into a new house. Besides, she says she will be too lonely. Honestly, sweet, I don't know what to think. She is right in some respects and wrong in others, and I can't say that I blame her for any ideas she may have. How gloomy this letter sounds. Things really aren't that bad, so cheer up, baby. After your departure, Mom and I cleaned up the kitchen, got fixed up, and sat on the page three porch. We talked about everything, mostly babies. About 11.30, we had some tea and then hit the hay. Talk about getting compliments. I got 12 of them today. Everyone at work, including the bosses, complimented me on my appearance. They all thought my hairstyle was lovely and that I looked very sophisticated. I wore my black and white dress. Aren't you proud of your wife? Mom had to go to the customs house today for her citizenship papers. She said that she went through plenty of red tape before she could leave. They asked her those questions she was supposed to memorize page four, and she didn't know them. She said that it didn't really matter. I hope the journey back was comfortable and that you arrived on time. How are you feeling? Not too tired, I hope. I love you, sweet, and I hope that you will write as soon as possible to your loving wife, Ev. P.S. I sprayed this letter with toujours moi, but the odor is very faint. It's responsible for the blurry marks. Philip to Evelyn, Monday, May 26, 7 p.m. Dear Ev, arrived safely after a very fast trip by train and taxi, getting here at 10.30 p.m. Got a good night's sleep and awoke this morning feeling swell and raring to go. This morning was cool and sunny after the rain and it was nice to be in the field. Everything smelled fresh and clean. I didn't even begin to feel tired until the late afternoon when it got much warmer. But I didn't have to put up with the discomfort for long as we were through by 4.30. After chow, I showered, shaved, etc. And here I am writing to you, my sweet. Incidentally, I thought you looked swell this past weekend. This weekend is still in doubt, although I did ask for a pass. A friend of Sam's was inducted here last Tuesday and he has his car here. We're going over to try to make arrangements to come in with him whenever we have leave. If it works out, it'll cost us about $2 each time we come in, which is quite a saving, no? There isn't much more I can write now, so you'll forgive me if I seem to cut this letter short. I also went to drop Jackie a letter tonight. More tomorrow, my love to all, your soldier, Phil. P.S. Just remember to tell you I don't have the fare if I do happen to get my pass. We won't get paid till June 4th. I don't feel right about this constant importuning for money, but I will give it back to you, Ev, if you'll bear with me a little while. P.P.S. I forgot my bathing suit after all. I'd appreciate it, sweet, if you could get it to me sometime this week. 